I was charged with discussing that vascular disease in women, gender does make a difference. I'd like to start with a strong statement. There is a difference, and it's for the worse. Women are less likely to present to their health care providers for evaluation of arterial vascular diseases. Women are less likely to undergo intervention. Women have worse operative outcomes. For the rest of the talk, I'd like to discuss some of the proof for these statements and potentially what we can do to change these outcomes. Why the difference? Is there a difference in vascular biology? Is there a fundamental difference in the arterial wall between men and women? Is it simply size difference? Do women react differently to intervention? And then the social issue, is there a difference in how women are perceived and treated by healthcare providers? We are aware that there is a gender differential overall in cardiovascular disease. Some of these are epidemiologic. More than 10% of all women are over the age of 75, biasing studies towards older women. And women, as are minorities, are underrepresented in current studies. Whether it be NASID, Adam, or any of the other large studies, women are constantly underrepresented. There are also biologic factors, some of which are understood, some of which are not. We are aware that there are smaller diameters of arteries in women as compared to men. The compliance is also less. Women have higher heart rates in general, and with aging, the pulse pressure increases in women much more so than in men. I'd like to focus for the remainder of the talk for time constraints on, on aortic aneurysms. In women, the diameter of the infrarenal aorta is smaller. In a large population-based study looking at MRI-derived aortic diameters, the suggested breakpoint for calling something an aneurysm in men was suggested at 3 centimeters and in women of 2.7, 10% less than our male counterparts. Further, there's more rapid and pronounced changes in the infrarenal aorta in women after menopause and further on into the sixth and seventh decades. There are many hypotheses, but most of them focus around matrix metabolism and the effect of sex hormones upon matrix metabolism. One thing that is not well understood is what is the true prevalence of abdominal aortic aneurysms in women. Looking at autopsy studies, the numbers aren't terribly different, with a overall prevalence in women of a little over 2% and of men a little over 3.5%. However, when we look at surveillance studies, follow-up of known aneurysms, we found, find a huge disparity, where women account for only 1% and men 4.3%. In epidemiologic studies, it's understood that men have a five-fold risk of aneurysms than women, but when we look at women with risk factors, that number jumps to 4 to 6% of prevalence. When gender is used in modeling of outcomes after aneurysms, in a study of almost 1,000 patients who underwent endovascular repair, eight preoperative variables were included, one of which was gender, and there were 17 outcome variables. Female, predict, female gender was found to be predictive of both early and mid-term type 2 endoleaks, suggesting a, change in, a difference in biology, not just mechanics. So we looked at the Medicare data set, looking at the inpatient data set from 1995 to 2004, and we looked specifically at, the, at patients with a diagnosis of ruptured aneurysm as either a primary or a secondary diagnosis. Standard statistical analyses were conducted, including a t-test, chi-square, as well as trust for t tests for trends. So over the course of the study, we found a marked decrease overall in ruptured aneurysms, but what we found when we broke this out by gender is this was almost exclusively due to a decrease in the number of men diagnosed with ruptured aneurysms. So here you can see that this trend is significant for men, and the number for women is really not terribly different. Then when we looked at who actually underwent repair, we find that that trend parallels those that were diagnosed. And then when we look at the ratio of interventions to diagnosis, we find that men were more likely to be intervened upon than women, about somewhere between 70 to 75 percent, where women don't even reach the 60 percent mark. When we look at mortality by, broken out by gender, we also find a significant difference, with male gender having a perioperative mortality rate of somewhere between 40 to 45 percent over the study period, and women generally falling between 50 to 55 percent over the study period. Again, a significant difference. Length of stay in those that survive is also different, with men having a statistically significantly shorter length of hospital stay after repair. So why the difference? We're aware that there are differences in anatomy. Women tend to have more complex anatomy. There's a higher percentage of women who have suprarenal and thoracic aortic involvement. Women rupture at a smaller diameter than men. Again, this may come back to changing our definition of what constitutes an aneurysm in women. 
One group hypothesizes that clinicians may perceive different outcomes and thus be less inclined to offer intervention to women. There may be differences in comorbidities. There may be difference in the clinical presentation. 50% of deaths from ruptured aneurysm in women occur outside the hospital. That number is only 30% for men. There may be differences in the rate of patients who refuse intervention when offered. How can we improve these numbers? How can we get gender equity? How can we study women better? Should women be screened? The U.S. Health Services Task Force has recommended screening for men, but not for women at this point. Should we change our threshold for intervening in women? Should we change the way we intervene in women? And how do we follow women with known aneurysms? Should it be more frequent than men? Should it be of a different modality? All of these are questions which hopefully future study will be able to answer. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for the privilege of presenting.